Hi YouTube, this video is specifically for uh, Webflow users and how to reduce spam on your Webflow forms. So basically Webflow supports reCAPTCHA I think out of the box, but the problem is reCAPTCHA alone doesn't really reduce spam. Uh, there's a lot of services like uh, CAPTCHA solving services where it's you know 50 cents US per 1000 uh, CAPTCHA solves. So th there's got to be more layers of defense than just a CAPTCHA. Um, and you can see that, well, with your own testing, you'll find that Basin works um, without CAPTCHA even involved. So where does spam come from? Well, we have a spam blog post that highlights where all the spam comes from. This is back from, you know, January 2022. And basically, um, you know, out of 50,000 submissions we sampled, 76% were spam incoming to our forums, right? And you can see, you know, where we catch each submission, whether or not it's spam, right? So we rely quite heavily on our machine learning AI solution, you know, filtering 32%. And you can see only 0.5% fails the CAPTCHA, you know, 14% from the IP block list, 1.5% were duplicate, 18%, almost 19, exactly matches previous spam submissions that we've received, right? So we keep track of all the spam we've received. And, you know, a lot of it is just exactly duplicate, right? And then 11% contains risky URLs. So we actually have a script, a script that, um, will look at the content of the submission and go and check out those websites that are submitted to make sure that, you know, they don't contain scams, that they actually link to real websites, that type of thing, you know, and then we're relying on an email block list for 7%, 12% just for, you know, making sure that the submission origin actually matches the website it's supposed to come from, right? And then only 1.8% uh, is filtered out because of the honeypot. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly set up Basin JS and then enable some of these features uh, that will get you to a spam free inbox. Uh, this should only take, you know, a couple of minutes. I'll race through it as quickly as I can. So a good place to get started is at your Webflow site. Um, I'm on my contact page, right? So I'm going to go to my page and we need to add the base JS script. So if I hit the cog on the contact page and scroll down to inside the head, I'll go back to the base and JS docs. And then I'm going to actually take this base and JS script and put it into before the closing body tag, right? I think I could actually go in either of those. I'm going to hit save. So we've included the base and JS script. Next, we need to um, tell the base and JS script that we want this form controlled so we're going to add some attributes to the form so what you do is you click on um you click into one of these inputs and then at the bottom you can see that there's actually two uh form fields right so we'll just select the innermost form field and as long as we're consistent we should be fine and then over here we'll choose settings and custom attributes now which attributes are we going to be putting in well the first attribute we need is uh, database and form, right? So we're going to go ahead and take database and form. We'll go back to Webflow. We're going to say name, database and form, value true. That's our first attribute, right? And then additionally, we'll need, um, we need another one, you know, basically saying which spam protection method we want to use. So we'll, we'll use um, reCAPTCHA since that's the most convenient one to set up. Cloudflare takes, uh, you know, a few extra steps and there's a whole video um, going over that. So if we go back here, we can add another attribute, spam database and spam protection. And the value should be just reCAPTCHA, just like that. And then there's another attribute here yet, basically saying what we want to happen on success. Do we want to render? Do we want to redirect? Um, and you can see all the options down here, right? So we are, we're going to choose, let's just render. That's the easiest. Webflow has um, built in success and error messages that we will take advantage of. So we're going to go down here. 
database and success. The action, what happens when you know you submit, will just render the success and error messages instead of redirecting to some other site. Okay, so just like that, we've you know we've already added um, we've added a recaptcha, but more than just that, we're now submitting to actually we're not submitting to Basin yet. Um, I have a form in Basin, so I'm going to take my my form endpoint. And this is also a pretty important step is putting that into the action, right? So now we're submitting to Basin at this endpoint. Basin.js is taking over the form with some JavaScript helper on the page. Um, we'll publish that. And then we're going to actually toggle on some more features within Basin. One of the important ones is setting the origin domain. This feature alone filters out significant amounts of spam. So, um, you know, more, more so even than the recaptcha itself. Um, spammers are lazy. They don't even set the correct origin. Um, and this is configured within your project settings. So for this project, we can go down here, allow domains, and we'll just include whatever design.webflow.com. And that is actually, if we go to my website, that's just the, uh, this is the one we would want to include actually basin JS demo webflow, right? So let's go back to basin somewhere here. So that's the first step. Um, you know, we've set up the allowed domains that we're, we're allowing. And then if we go back to our form, let's go back under spam. There's a ton of other settings that we can uh, configure under here. So we did set up Google recaptcha, so we should be requiring that response, right? Otherwise you could submit with or without, um, you know, we already have the duplicate filter. Another filter is, you know, ensuring that emails are valid. Um, you know, that there's actually a mail server set up that matches that email. Um, more important for some of the, like, you know, maybe the international emails, obviously most Gmails are just valid and Gmail gives emails to anyone. I don't know why they don't crack down on that a little bit more. The honeypot on its own, I haven't found is extremely helpful, but maybe you'll find more success than me. Um, and then of course the rest of these features are all automatically built into basin, right? So we, you know, we have this feature that um, checking all the URLs that are submitted to make sure that they're not phishing websites. They don't have all these um, bad keywords or bad words. Uh, you can further block countries. You can filter down to specific languages. Um, and these are some of the spam features that we offer. Additionally, when your submissions do come in and you find that there is spam, um, just by moving items from your inbox to your spam folder, you're helping us improve our spam detection methods. And we're retraining that, um, you know, on a, on a regular basis, depending on, you know, once there's enough volume, um, that we could significantly retrain our ML models, we are doing that. So I hope this is informative and helps you, uh, figure out the areas to focus on in terms of improving the spam that you're receiving. Um, one other thing that I'll note is, you know, dealing with, uh, since, since we are filtering things from the inbox to the spam, and there is the possibility to lose leads, uh, it's important to, you know, first of all, we're saving all of those spam submissions in basin, but we do empty this, um, frequently enough, right? Maybe every 90 days or whatever it is. So I do recommend setting up a webhook that's triggered specifically for your spam. So, uh, you know, all of your non spam submissions, you might have a webhook that goes to your CRM. And then, you know, you should do something additionally with your spam submissions somewhere at some point you should filter through your spam submissions to make sure you're not losing leads. And uh, I mean, everyone's threshold for that is different depending on their business. Some businesses have leads worth a lot of money and it's worth their time to probably filter through those. So I hope that helps. And I hope this was informative. Um, thanks for watching. And of course, if you need any help with anything, reach out to support at usebasin.com via email, and we would love to help you out.